Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment, serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have one of your favorites, Sarah Colonna. Welcome back. Hey, girl. So great, great to you see you. You have a really you. good outfit today. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I like uh, the earrings really tie it together. I've never been a person who knows how to tie things together with jewelry, but look at you. I have to tell you, this was something I didn't know that would work together. Um, no, it works well. I, I, I know, a bright coral with a black sh shirt. Who would have thought? I, I normally would have gone like white with coral, but actually black looks really good. No, it does look really good. Thank so you. You can come over and dress me sometimes. That would be great. I'm wearing the same flip-flops I've been wearing for 10 years. And I, I know those flip-flops. Yeah. I was happy to see this little Tootsies walk in one more time. <laughs> Springtime. Doesn't matter if it's springtime or wintertime. No, I, I wear them in the cold. Yeah, I, my acupuncturist told me that's bad and that it can um, it makes your periods worse. Oh, By sorry, the way, <laughs> um, speaking of summer feet, okay. When I came back from Palm Desert last weekend, my bottoms of my feet were like I had walked like an Egyptian across <laughs> Africa in, before Jesus came. It was the driest, most cracked feet ever. Oh. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I got a pedicure, but even they can't, like, do anything. Do they, like, do they give you a look like, oh, boy, what's she happening She just to you? was like, and then someone said, do you want that baby feet stuff? And that baby feet stuff, it's like you put it on, and then two weeks later, like, you're just, like, in a jacuzzi, and it looks like a jellyfish is in it because it's just, like, your skin Peels is just off. Yeah. falling off. But anyway, and this is not an ad, though. I got this thing <laughs> that's, like... um like a little like a a little scrolling going around it's like um it's like a piece of like uh scrapey paper that then is electric you ch oh, charge it up okay. and you just put it on the bottom of your feet it work oh my god like i might have to film it next time i i'm going to let it get really bad and then i'm going to film it because <laughs> It was uh, are you gonna, ridiculous. You better put that on like OnlyFans or some I shit. Know, I know. I was just talking to Amber Rose about. She said, "Why don't you just do feet, oh, just your feet for OnlyFans?" Because I've said I'm, I I just toy with the idea all the time. But I'm telling you, if there's a fetish for dry, cracked bottoms of your feet that then are not cracked anymore, I could corner that market because I I went outside in the sun by the way because I didn't want the that. dry skin like flying all over, <laughs> and I just was like. I can't believe it. And then when they were smooth, I was almost sad because I was like, I can't believe it's over. It was the best time of my life. <laughs> you're gonna have to you're gonna have to tell me what this thing is and I'll buy it. And then I okay. But I won't ever film it. I can promise everybody that. Okay, well, I'm just I might. Okay. I might. No, okay. you do you, girl. Let's talk about <laughs> the biggest event happening right now, and that's Prince Philip's funeral. Um, of course it was you know, announced that he passed. He lived a very long life and so immediately everyone was like, is Harry going to go? And I don't think it was hard for anyone to predict that Harry's going, but Meghan's not. She's a great excuse. She's super pregnant. Right. Well, that's true. I mean, yeah, she is really pregnant. I okay, forgot. so he has to go and be in quarantine for a week. But, like, what is this going to be like? It's going to be the most awkward. <laughs> like, it's so this is his grandpa, right? This I is always, the grandpa. I get the I get the um, yes. line of the royal family confused. Okay. Yes. But it's going to be awkward. Mm -hmm. I mean, he still had a good relationship with him mm. as far and the queen, right? It sounds like, like he, yeah. It sounds like he knew where to, his bread was buttered. And he'd always spoke very nicely about the queen. Yeah. Not so much about Charles. No. Said he and his dad were a little like estranged during that Oprah interview. Right. But it's going to be awkward. I mean, could, like, what are they going to do? Like, hey, you've been. What have you been up to? <laughs> Doing and then any we still don't television know who the, interviews yeah. lately? Yeah. I mean, and then like, we still don't know who the racist is. Who said the thing about right. the color of the skin? Right. They they thought maybe it was Charles. They thought maybe it was him. They thought, and then I heard, no, it's Anne. I'm like, where did she come from all of a sudden? Anne's even... like, what? I've not been in the news for years. <laughs> Throw me, me out of it. Like, leave me out. Um, yeah. So I don't know. And who? And if that person's at the thing... If it's a person that was that close and yes. that enough to be at the at the funeral, then that's going to be even extra awkward. 
Or Bill, maybe they'll be like, thanks for doing me a salad and not saying my name. What if they're like, oh, how's everything in Santa Barbara? Is your son developing a tan? Right. <laughs> Like, you can't even say that now. He's going to, he, it's not going to be. And then everyone's like, all I meant was it's sunny in Santa Barbara. It's sunnier than in England. So the kid might become tanner as all of us do. And then it's going to be, so I just if you guys are listening, which I'm sure you are, just be really sensitive about what you say to Harry. Well, I mean, but whatever, it, well, the thing that he said that they yeah. said was not great. No, that it's was awful. Not, it was awful. So but I we don't, still don't know who said it. I know, but that's what I mean. So it's going to be maybe that if that person's there, are they going to be like, thank you for not saying my name? Or are they just going to avoid him I altogether? think they're going to avoid him. Like, they're going to, like, literally, like, you know, going up with their little plate to get some salmon. I'm assuming there's going to be, like, definitely salmon. <laughs> and then they're just going to be like, oh, so sorry. Don't need a mind. And then you get the, like, oh my, I would avoid eye contact. I yeah. Would... Yeah. I think you just, because you don't want to, because you don't want to then, what if you say something or piss him off in any way where he's like, you know what? Now I'm going to tell everybody who it was. So you just better, you better steer clear because he yeah. did you a favor by not naming you. But I just but in general, happy, it's going to be awkward. How happy is she that she's that, that she's very pregnant? That she doesn't have to go? Yeah. Because if she wasn't pregnant, then that would be the wife is staying home. Yeah. I mean, she could still say I'm staying home with the baby, but I mean, come on. It's... Also, they said that they've had to call the police like nine times in a month. I know. And one of them said, okay, I was reading that. Um... Because because they've been fighting a lot. No, just kidding. No, no they're calling the, the police because they said they've heard things or have felt threatened or something. Yeah. I One said that there was somebody trespassing and they actually did arrest someone. So that was like, okay, they actually someone was actually on their property, which is scary. And it the, wasn't Samantha the sister. And it was not, it was not <laughs> Samantha the sister. Or maybe it was. Like, no, they yeah. said it was a man, I think. Okay. But, um, but then the other one said a phone alert. What does that mean? Or it, it said, or was that just mean that, that it was a phone call to nine one one and not a secure like a security alarm? And I was oh. just confused by the wording in the article about it. it said something like was a phone. Are they reporting this like in English terms? I don't know. It's about English maybe, people. Maybe, maybe. Like, maybe like, like, like it was a phone alert. Yeah, they got called on the telly that there's a problem in the flat. You're like, it's a house. Oh, this is so Santa annoying. Barbara. Yeah, yeah. It's in Santa Barbara. It's not a flat. Um, yeah, I think. There was one that said it was that that someone was actually on the property. Another one that was like an alarm was triggered, and are you annoyed if you're their neighbor, or do you like it because it just means there's just more police activity on your neighborhood block? I don't know. I feel like I'd just be annoyed to be their neighbor in general, just because I'd be like, well, Oprah didn't ask me over. And right. I've been, I've been living here for years. Yeah. So. Right. I've had to, I've waved glad. to her like a bunch of yeah, times. I've you... made the recipes and shit. Yeah. And I, like never once. Have I, 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 gotten made, I, take, I make her cauliflower pizza or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I would be. I think I would. Do just you think be cauliflower annoyed. pizza crust is finally it, where it needs to be for people to eat it? I've never ever I had it, and I never. You never think, even tried it. No, I don't want to try it. I just don't think I'll like it. I don't like cauliflower. Why would I? Like I think it's just a pizza? healthier way to do a crust. I know, but I just rather just have pizza and then not and then just not have pizza when I want to not. Have it. Right, just cut it out when you can't have. Not yeah. do it like a half-ass healthy pizza. I can't. Yeah, every time I've tried any kind of like uh, substitute crust for really anything, yeah, I've always been really disappointed. Mm. I don't like a spinach pasta. I don't oh, like a. Yeah. I don't like a. Udi's. How about a spaghetti? Bread. How about a biscuit? Sorry, Udi's. How about spaghetti squash like that? That's completely uh, a misleader. Because yeah. you go spaghetti squash and you're like, it's basically just you took a piece of squash and like put a fork to it yeah. and made little lines Spirals. in it. Spirals. Yeah. You, I mean, you, you could do it out That's of anything. It's not spaghetti. I, I think the spaghetti sauce, squash, you would think it was spaghetti, pasta like spaghetti. Right. That was made with squash. And so you're totally getting like a noodle experience, but no. it's not. No, there's no noodle experience. There's just like, um. anyway, we could really talk about noodles all day. I don't but know. I don't. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> I thought this photo was amazing. This is the queen, um, single and ready to mingle. I don't know who took this photo. I don't know who to give credit to. But it is basically the queen with a superly low-cut blouse. I really oh, sometimes, take a selfie. Sometimes take a selfie in the mirror. Sometimes, <coughs> sometimes I really do love the internet. Other times I really hate it. But, boy, when someone does something funny with it, just it's silly. Oh, just single for and fun. ready to Sitting mingle. Right, yeah. Get back out there, girl. Do it. I feel like that might have been Kim with, and they added a necklace. Yeah, I think it has. I think it Kim is. Kim Kardashian. Well, yeah. could you imagine, like, at that age, 
And you've, how long were they married? I mean. Now, I am not a big crown watcher, but I think in the early seasons of The Crown, he was quite the cat, right? He cheated yeah. on her all oh, the time, he and she, she had to, like, put up with it. Oh, I don't know either. But I just feel like if you are married for a really, really, really long time, and then your husband goes first, and you're, like, I, I just want to live out the rest in, in peace and quiet. No, I don't want to. Nobody wants another old man. No. From the line of or my a young man. <laughs> mother-in-law, she's like, are you kidding me? I don't want another old man to take care of. Like, No. If Peter goes first, do you remarry or? Do yes, you... I want, but it will be a young man that oh, I take I care of. A very okay. young, very. You, you really lit up when I asked you that question. <laughs> oh, I'm too young to just throw in the towel. But if it happened like at 70 or something, yeah, I don't know that I would be looking for it. But yeah. I mean, you could have fun with it. But I, I don't think, yeah, I don't, especially if you had to deal with someone that was really old and sick. No, it just seems like you would just rather just yeah. have the peace and quiet. Just the peace and quiet and the fun. The Go to lunch with your friends. <laughs> so this was a post you did. We went parasailing and I lived to tell the story. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't start watching Who Killed Sarah, which is weird. It's your name. I know. And you guys have a photo of you parasailing. Can you tell a little bit? Now, was this just this past vacation? This was just this past week. Uh, you last... told me it was so windy. Why would you chose to go parasailing in such a windy place? Well, we went on the one day that the wind calmed down and, the, and they were parasailing. We were watching people the whole time. And John was like, we never do anything on vacation. And we don't complain. We like that. Um, we, so not... you do a lot. It's called drinking and sitting on in a lounge chair. Yeah, exactly. That's all, And that's all we want to do. And, and that's what... a lot of exercise. It the, is. The hand mm-hmm. going up to the... It's a the, bicep yeah. workout. Yeah. Um, I, I get finger exercise from my Kindle swiping. Uh, right. I do a lot of reading. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we don't do go on activities. And I don't feel guilty about that, and neither does he. And this okay. is why we work. But we did like watch people go out parasailing all day because it was right there. That also made it appealing because we didn't have to like get in a car and go somewhere to get okay. to it. It was just right on the beach next to us. And I was like... He said he wanted to do it, and but that he was nervous. Now it is kind of funny because he looks his little legs like he's a big tall man, and then yeah. in a little in a parasail, his little leg he looked like a little kid. His legs are all bunched up, um, but it was fun. It was very fun. But then we started watching Who Killed Sarah. Like, the and next what is that day. about? Tell me what Who so Killed Sarah. So it's about. it's a it's um, I believe it's made. I believe it was. Uh, produced in Mexico. Okay. And it's um very good. It's uh, it's like super kind of So it's a documentary? M- no, it's, oh, a, it's a it's a TV. It's just like a, oh, a drama. Okay. But it's a little like kind of um so melodramatic. Okay. But it's also really good. It's like so this girl in the very beginning you see it so I'm not really spoiling anything is okay. this girl dies parasailing right in the very beginning. Oh, she really does? <laughs> <Yeah>. How? <laughs> well, it was uh, that's what the whole thing's about. Was it an accident? Was it not? So, but how does but it his, happen? It falls down it, into like, the water. It, the um, the like it, the the cables break and it rips off and then she slams down into the water. Which I wasn't sure. I was while I was up there, I was like, oh, if we fall, we just fall in the water. It's probably fine. But apparently not. I guess you'd hit pretty hard. I don't know. I had a very scary parasailing experience happen. What happened? Lake Havasu. I was like fifteen or something, and so they had like a in the lake. They had like a a landing area that they would go from, you know, like, so you'd be sitting in the middle of the thing. Right. And went off. The boat took me around. And then when I was coming down, they were like pulling me to to land on the landing and I missed it. And I went into the water Um, and I was like, (gasps) like, I couldn't make myself out. I could not make myself out of that parachute. And I remember the guys jumped in and I kicked one by accident. I still feel badly. But he was trying <laughs> to get me to lead me out. But I have to say it was one of the... No, that would be scary because you're trapped is, under the parachute. I, mean, I was 15 years old. I remember like yesterday. Like It was, oh my God, I might not be able to ever find myself out. Also because I'm like trapped. So yeah. I have to really swim far out. So they and jumped right like, in and got you out. Yes, but still... No, that's, that would, a, that's a very scary thing that could yeah, happen, that, too. Yeah, I kind of thought about that, but I'm glad I didn't talk to you before I did it. I did do it once before when I was, like, 16 or something with my dad. Yeah. and But, like, then you had to start from the beach and right. run. And then you would be in the air where this, you started from the boat, and then you just went backwards, and then they brought you in. But they, I never saw anyone look like so they were going to miss. So then you land on the boat. You land on the boat, yeah. See, they did dip us in the water. To ha- they were having fun with us. That was kind of like fucking with us and dipped oh. us in the water on the way in. But it was like fun. It didn't. Yeah. Wasn't scary. Also in Mexico, I've heard people have been slammed up against buildings. 
I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. now that I think about it, it was probably a bad idea. But, you know, we we, we luckily made it. You did. You made it. You're <laughs> now okay. Now I'll never do it again now that I'm thinking I about it. I went on a yacht you yesterday. You went on a yacht. Yes. yes. I need to know about this. I went on a yacht um, with my friend Krista, and she said, do you want to go on a yacht tomorrow? And this guy whose yacht it is, he owns um, the Malibu Rocky. What's it called? Malibu? Rocky, Rocky Winery, Oaks Winery. Rocky Oaks, Oaks Winery, right in Malibu. But, and I've met him a couple times, but I hadn't, I've never been on the boat. Like, we're like acquaintances and follow each other. So I was like, oh my God, I can't believe we're going to go on this like massive yacht. So, you know, it was either at 12. So I was there at 1155 because okay. I'm always paranoid of like being the late one. Like, all I want to do is just be the most delighted of a guest to be like asked back when nobody really cares. Like, I'd have been there at like 1130, <laughs> just me. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't really take off to like three because so many people were trolling in late. But uh, we did take off. It was really fun. It was gorgeous. It has a helicopter pad. Oh my god! Yes. So it's we were like laying huge... on the lounge chairs. How hel- big was it? Like, what's the? Oh, it's like below deck big. <sighs> yeah, like. No, and not you're not talking about below deck sailing yacht. You're talking about no. I'm a talking a normal boat, boat yeah. like. And there were the girls that had the little outfits on, and oh, can I get you guys anything? And you know that kind of thing. And um, so it was really, it was fun. But then, like, by the end, you know, also I'd take a dream. I mean, by the end, then they were like, oh, you guys going to join us for Soho House at dinner? I'm like, oh, my God, no. Like, get me in my car. I'm so tired. Oh. But I'm also not, like, looking to, like, find a husband, you know. Right. Well, not yet. Not yet. (laughs) (laughs) But that's a really good photo. You look really pretty. So that's also fun. And how many people were on it? Probably like 25, 30. I mean, it wasn't an enormous amount of people or anything. And it was like very normal people. It was not like a bunch of hoey chicks besides right. me. <laughs> no, you were the only thirsty one on there. <laughs> I was the only one. I was just like, let me just take some photos. You know, and it was it was cool. Like it just it's just a fun experience. And it, at first, though, when I woke up, it was really gloomy. And I was like, mm, do I do this? Right. And I'm so glad I did because it broke and it was sunny. And, oh, Peter just pulled it up. Wow. Oh, to rent it, it's 122. Now, 122,000 to rent a week. And then what? Does it go, if you rent it, does it go out in the water or does it just stay docked? No, you, you rent it. You go somewhere <laughs> for a know. week. <laughs> like they take just you live somewhere. There. Yes, of yeah. course. I don't think it's that fun to just stay there. Why well, wasn't uh, Peter invited? Oh, because he was doing his own boat thing. He oh. was uh, getting certified on that cat, on the catamaran thing so now he's fully certified and can take me to catalina that'll be fun well maybe i'll let you do a couple trial runs before i invite myself (laughs) our first trial run with another couple is going to be uh fourth of july weekend oh so i really now this friend this girl's been a friend for mine for a really long time so i i'm hoping that we'll still be friends after or what are you going to make him do a few outings on his own I think we're trying to do something on um, Mother's Day weekend providing the weather's nice and everything so we'll do a little test run on ourselves well just text your just text everyone you know where you're going and always when you're expected to arrive in case Peter's elaborate plan to off you is why he got this license I think that I think you do it like a couple times in when nobody's even thinking about it anymore right no one's worried. No like, one like Fourth of July. No, I don't think it'll be Fourth of July. Oh. I think you wait till like later on to off me. But you know he. Uh... I would think it would be earlier, so you could be like, I, I'm new to this, so when I didn't know what to do, and then, and so she fell off. Like, oh, I'm new right. guy. Yeah. So I think it's early on because then you can say that you, you know, are a rookie, a rookie driver. It's not your fault. I know. Well, he wants me to wear a life just vest while I'm having fun. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that at all. <laughs> well, I mean, are you? Su- you're not supposed to wear them the whole time you're on, unless you're like four. Like yeah, right. no. But he yeah. wants me to because he's just like, I don't know that you're not gonna get drunk and fall off, and then everyone's gonna think that he did it. And I'm right. like, of course they will. Right. Well, he's planning. like, if I'm dead and my husband goes to prison for my murder and he's actually innocent, I still am okay with that. Because if we can't have fun together on earth together. 
he might as well be in prison. Might as well be in prison. <laughs> he might as well rot in prison. I mean, in a way, it would be his fault. But yes. maybe he should do like, what, remember when I told you that we watched The Staircase yes. and then John put a, a camera above our staircase? Um, he already has cameras yeah. all over the garage and stuff. He like make places sure they're that all over I could the boat, like slip too. or fall. Yeah, he wants to try to do that, I think, a couple little spots. Well, security cameras on the boat. I mean, really, you should. Yeah. All right, Usher. Now, I was reading this article. This is trending. I kind of think this could be a publicity stunt for him. Oh, for him? It doesn't make him look good. Okay, well, okay, explain. Well, I just saw that um, the a couple women from strip clubs posted that this is that he gives them, like, fake money with his face on it. Instead of real money, he gives them. But then someone said this is a promotion for his residency in Vegas. But so it made me think like getting this story out right. also gets people talking about, oh, I didn't even know he had a residency in Vegas. Right. I mean, do you really think he was trying to pass us off as hundred dollar bills? I don't think he was trying to pass them off. I, th- I just my f- instant thought. And of course, I don't know if there's going to be a thing where it's like, oh, it was actually real. But this was taped. Oh, I, I mean, I don't think so, because she posted photos of it. So she would know if it was real right. or not. Um, so I just thought. I was like, is this man so egotistical that he thinks someone's going to be like, oh, awesome. I got fake right. fucking Usher money instead of, but no. Instead of real money. Yeah. And she wrote, ladies, what would you do if you danced all night for Usher and he threw you this? I mean, I don't. And he I did would, 120s and 100. So you'd think that the 100 is like, well, at least somebody. Yeah, I, you're right. It's pretty awful. I, I once chased a couple out of a restaurant yeah. because they didn't tip me. So you what think that you I say? would let the I'm gonna shit be go? the person. I'm gonna be the person. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I um, I said, oh, excuse me. Oh, ma'am, excuse oh. me. Hi. Um, oh, did I leave something at the restaurant? Oh, no, I. You, so this is your bill, and I just noticed you forgot to fill in the the gratuity part. There was eight of you, so the gratu- you-, you know the part where you leave a tip, a gratuity. That's em- <gasps> that's empty. So you, I think, I think you just forgot to fill oh. that in. Oh. Um. Okay, well, I I, I have thought, a pen right here if you want to just fill it in. I just thought in. I thought with eight people, normally when there's more than eight people, eight or more, then right? That's no, included. But, right, no, but I told you when I set it down that the gratuity was not included, and you said, "Okay, good to know, thank you." Oh, I don't remember that part. Right. Well, oh, because you said thank you for letting you okay, know. Okay, so let me just let me hold on. Let me mm-hmm. get my glasses. Yeah. Um, oh, here. Oh, so mm-hmm. it was it was one hundred and eighty dollars. So it was actually just... eight hundred and ten dollars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Well, we'll just make it an even. Eight twenty. Then there you go. Ten dollars. There you oh. go. Oh, there you go. Thank you very much. Thank are you. you. Are, Thank you. Are you sure that you want to leave? 10- Thank you. I will actually. If, if I have to get into it right now with your manager, it wasn't great service. It was really good service. Actually, actually it really wasn't. And I've I've dined all over the city. Okay. Well, I've been to so if many. If you restaurants. weren't satisfied with something, you could have said something. But well, insta- I didn't want to embarrass you because I figure you don't have much going for you if you're working at this restaurant. Well, I mean, I don't now. I eight hundred and ten dollars. I should at least. I really have, have to go. I'm really busy. I actually have quite a career. Something that you don't. Since well, you're a waitress. you have such a great career. Why can't you afford to? T- don't go to places if you can't afford to tip. Okay, them. I'm feeling uncomfortable right now. I'm actually now. getting mad at you right now. <laughs> I'm feeling uncomfortable. Do you imagine? No. What did happen though? She just said not today was her response oh she said no i said today. oh i think i said I, I said i think you forgot to leave it a gratuity and she said yeah not today and i was so stunned i just stood there and then her and her seven other guests just walked away and i did literally and it was a restaurant where we didn't put the gratuity on and we should have for that and yeah. i told her when i set it down and i said just so you guys know gratuity is not included and both her and her husband made eye contact with me and were like oh thank you for letting us know and then they did not leave one and then she said not today <laughs> i feel like not that today. i feel like that's a new line that could take over like you know how uh, mariah carey goes oh i don't know her yeah i think like not today could be one of those like <laughs> not today not today honey yeah not today miss. it could be not today not today just not today not how about today. tomorrow maybe can you could you have come tomorrow instead maybe maybe if this whole thing happened 24 hours in the future Life would be different, but yeah. then that wouldn't be today, would it? No, that would be tomorrow. Right. So that's, not today. That's maybe why tomorrow. you're the career lady, and I'm the loser waitress. I guess. Thanks, lady. Well, yeah. I'm glad so you called I, her on it. Well, so I'm saying, if that if that was my response to that, I don't think I'd have a very solid, calm response to um, someone giving me a fake hundred dollar bill instead of a 
even I'd rather have a one real dollar than a fake one hundred dollar. Okay, but I am making the prediction that this is Some a kind publicity of publicity stunt. stunt. Yes. Okay. Um, well, okay. It was a bad publicity stunt. Chloe Gate, you know about Chloe. Yeah. Gate. So she did respond again. She did a one video where she has Kim's filming her in her sweatpants and she lifts up her sweats and dances around. Then she did another one where she's in front of the mirror and her abs look really good. And she just said, you know, I I have a hard time. But she goes, she added that she tries to live my life as honestly and possible with the empathy and kindness, but that it's almost unbearable trying to live up to the impossible standards that the public have all set for me. Responding to the criticism after posting heavily outed images, she said that she wants to present about herself. I want to present myself to the world the way I want to be seen, and it's exactly what I will continue to do unapologetically. I mean, that I respect. It's like, okay. But the I whole think thing that, started from, yeah. she looked good in that photo, and I know that not everyone feels that way about themselves. Like right. Someone, everyone has like a, a you know, a distorted view of themselves sometimes on social media. Right. And I get it, but it's also like, if they hadn't made such a big deal out of it and had it taken down and insisting people taking things down that I don't even think is even, I mean, can't people just take photos and put them up? I don't really even think it's illegal. What they, it just seems like they made such a big deal out right. of it, and this is what made it worse. Whereas she could have just been like, "Oh shit, I didn't like that photo, but all right, it's out there," you know? Right. And I, I, I understand how, like, when she said that, like, "Look, I've been, you know, been criticized for, you know, not being the pretty sister," and I know that part sister, made me feel all bad that for stuff her, like that. is sad. But the only thing I'd say is, you. And I've always given them credit. They created social media to be profitable, to take these kind of photos. We are all just copying them. Yeah. Um, so when you've created that, then like then then shut up because you created the machine of of it all and and well, now you got caught. And then at the same time though, people are doing that whole like no filter thing and they act like you know makeup in this and then yeah. when it's caught, it's like well, what do you want from me? You guys have been mean to me my whole life. I know. Well, it, the thing is, like, it just seems like she, I feel like her, what her issues are are coming from an honest place yes. with it. But her attempt to explain it with the person in this photo is beautiful and I'm not ashamed of it. But I don't want anyone to post it anywhere because I'm devastated by it. Like, yes. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, it just seems like she's kind of talking out both sides of her ass. And instead, maybe she should just be like, I hated that photo and I have a fucking problem with it and I'm going to do everything I can to take it down and maybe just leave it at that because all these, you know, reasons and saying, well, this is, it just all seems to, like, it seems to be against the message that she's saying. Or as long as they do, as long as I do it, like if I want to show my cellulite scar or whatever or my stretch marks, that's fine. But I just have to make sure that it's only me doing it and not somebody else doing it. Because Wasn't it like a family? I mean, this was like a family member that took it, right? Oh, they're no longer part of the family, obviously. Who was it? Was it? I'm afraid it was MJ. And I'm afraid we're never going to hear from MJ again. <laughs> you think she just gone missing? And she, she went on a boat trip with Peter she to too, Catalina and never came get, back? She too will be cut from the Christmas card list. <laughs> Who's ever, like, from the Christmas party list. No, um... I heard it was MJ, but that could have just been like someone joking. I think it was like some assistant or something. And did people say negative things? Is that why she started freaking out, or she? No, just did no a, one said any. I don't know how much time went before they realized it was sent out until they tried to get it retracted. Right, and I, that's what I mean. Is I think if they just would have right let it roll off, it would have just gone away. And like I thought, I was like, damn, she looks great. <laughs> you know? Well, I I told the story of how. Years ago, I was on a boat with Chelsea and Whitney, and we all took photos, and I posted one of the photos, and then she told me later, before I performed, um, a friend of mine follows you, take down that photo of me, it's not good. And I was like shaking, and I was like, I'm so sorry, that's not what I meant, blah, blah, blah. And it was her sitting, and I thought her body looked great, but her legs were a little bit further apart. But that is back 
that was before everybody started doing those big crotch shot photos that are like this. Right. Like, boss lady, it's all about the crotch now. Right. And so she just posted a photo today, Whitney, of full crotch. It's like a joke. It's like, oh, this is what I think of Ben Shapiro. And it's yeah. like crotch. And, you should and dig up that photo that you have I and found just repost it. it. Do you want me to? I just found it. Wait, hold on. Because I wasn't sure I was going to share it with you, but now I will because you brought it up. So hold on. Let me... Let me find it really quick. Well, no, I mean, I get when nobody does, when people don't like, I mean, I sometimes, most of my friends and I will be like, hey, are you cool with this post? Like, it's just kind of the world we Wait, live in at this on. point. No, don't show it. Don't if show she it. If she hated, you said she didn't You're like right. I'll it. I'll just show it on Patreon. There you guys go. It really wasn't bad, but it's not bad compared to what she's showing now. But I will say, six years later, now that's her comedy, you right, know, right. and at the time it wasn't. So I get it. Right. It's just confused. I mean, it's I get when people don't want something up, but I just do feel like they made this whole thing. Yeah. So much. But it worse. is really scary when someone tells you that they don't like the photo that you posted of them and get it down now. It Chris is. Jenner did it me one time, too. And I, I been peeing on my pants like 6 a.m. <laughs> hey, doll, take down that picture now. And I was like, oh, fuck. I think that was the last time I was who, invited to anything. Who was it? Was it you Chris and her? Jenner. It and, was like a bunch of us, and she was like, her leg was kicked, and we were at dinner, and it was like, but it, but in her opinion, it wasn't good, and like I she mean, they knows are being so famous that it will, their... it'll get crazy. So right. then I'm like, okay, now I'm always like to everybody, are you okay with this? Are you okay with this? Especially yeah. if it's someone famous. Yeah, no, yeah. me too. I, I mean, even just with my friends, I ask, but um, but yeah, I just feel like they made a bigger. I mean, I think she just dug it into a. Well, speaking a of thing. more Kardashian stuff, okay. This past summer, Chloe was hanging out with the biggest TikTok girl. She's 19. Her name's Addison Ray. Okay. okay. And she kind of created all the TikTok dances and she's like a family too that's like on TikTok. And people were like, why are they hanging out together? Well, now we've seen back in the episodes that are airing that they address it. All the sisters are like, why is Courtney, who's 40, hanging out with a 19 year old? And they're renting this beach house during COVID. And the two of them are just laughing and laughing. And they're like, wow, we've never seen Courtney so happy. This is so amazing. And I'm watching this going, this is so fucking weird. What is this? And then they sit down with Addison and the sisters are like, are you guys romantic? Like, is this a romantic relationship? Are you gay together? And the girl's like, no, we just really get along. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? But then once again, I'm like, okay, now I feel like they were in on it back when we saw the Instagram photos. Like, I think the whole family was in on it. Like, invite her over. Courtney's going to act like it's fun. And we're going to keep the, we're going to have a rumor mill go that, like, are they gay? And then we're going to dress it on the show. Because then I went to a deep dive, and she, this was the last post photo that she posted with Addison Rae and it was back in August. So it was just all so part she's of over the, it. Now. Yeah. She's with Travis Barker. Travis got her he I mean he he couldn't find a clear spot, but he went over something else for her tattoo. Oh. So it says Courtney over something else. But yeah, she's over it. She's like right. she got it. She's like the typical girl that has a best friend, and then she gets a boyfriend, and then the girls just never hear from Addison her again. Rae's like, "Hey, I'm over here TikToking. What happens? <laughs> TikTok girl, I'm here." Um, but I felt like it was so acting. Like they were just like they'd be like yeah. laughing, <laughs> and everyone's sitting around going, "Why are they laughing so hard? Are they eating each other out?" And I was like, <laughs> "What is what this? A weird it was one. so bizarre." And also, like, what a weird. Um, Storyline, yeah, and well, what it has been on for a very long time. Yeah, and they're just like, let's do this to get everyone watching for our last season or whatever. Yeah, and, we'll, and then it, we we tap into this really so, young audience that might not be watching us regularly that will then watch the final season right. because Addison Ray, who has a hundred million TikTok followers, will watch her on Kardashians. Well, do you, what if she was in on it too? Do you think maybe she was in on it too, just to be on that? She's like, yeah, you guys can put this on the show. One hundred percent. I think they're both in on it. Okay. Yeah. And then That's people a lot thought, of work to thought, like, oh, are think they that gonna, far ahead. Are they like <laughs> producing a, a show with the Addison Rae family or oh, something? Oh, right. But, a crossover. I mean, yeah, it does seem like that. This whole family, um, as you know, obviously, and uh, all the world knows, they everything's very thought out way ahead of time. It's yeah. pretty insane. Like, until a picture goes up that they didn't think about, obviously. But, yeah, yeah it just seems like very calculated and I don't have the time for that but so good for them because it worked but it was kind of weird it was like this 40 year old mom and she's like so I met 
Addison Ray through Mason, who enjoys watching her TikToks. And we just really connected. And then and then Courtney had like some of her other like 40-year-old normal friends that just look like they're 40-year-old women, you know? Yeah. And Courtney looks so young anyway. And so that and then the friends are there like having a lunch and then the Here two of them are like laughing, like ah! Like doing like t- you know tumbling on the grass and stuff, and it was just I'd be annoyed. I'd be like, no, that's yeah. not. It's like it's like the deadly illusions or something. It was <laughs> it was it was a little bizarre. <laughs> Nick Cannon is expecting twin boys with um, Abby De La Rosa. Are they married? No, no. Okay. So he's had like a ton of kids. First, he had the two with Mariah Carey. Right. Then he had one or two with someone else, and so another one with someone else. Anyway, this he's having two more with her. And Mar- they have twins. Mariah has, yes. right? So the twins are from his side. Maybe, but they could have done uh, in vitro. Oh, right, right, right. Because okay. it's like she had them at like 40. So I right. don't know that it was natural. But this is probably natural. I don't think he went intentionally She's trying pretty. to have twins. I don't know. He just gets around. <laughs> okay, This speaking of babies, oh. this girl didn't know she was pregnant. Mm-mm. And her baby was born in the toilet. And you and I lived during an era together at Chelsea Lately of a show on TLC called I Didn't Know I Was Pregnant. I missed that show. And it was reenactments of people not knowing they're pregnant and giving birth. Mm -hmm. And it just, I just, I just like loved it. I love, you know, my favorite part about that show too was like, who, whatever every episode title was just wherever the baby was. It was like baby on a roller coaster, baby in a toilet, <laughs> baby in the Walmart. One was baby on a shoe because it like popped out and fell on a shoe. <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is so amazing. Like whoever writes these the titles of the episodes, it's just like just what phone it in. They're just like, yeah. Well, <laughs> I loved that. And show. no offense to some of the people that that were in that show because I remember I had a joke in my stand-up act and I said I'd watch the show and I'd get jealous because I'd say, well, why can't I be fat enough to have a cramp, go to the bathroom and come home with the baby? You know, like I just want to, I just, or go to the hospital and come home with the baby. Like I would love to not go through the stress of being pregnant, wondering is the baby going to be okay? You don't have to go to one prenatal visit. You don't have to have that scare where they're like, hold on, what's, wait, there's a, something. Oh, no, no, no. It's fine. I mean, for you those three sushi seconds, the whole time because you don't eat know. Eat sushi, tuna fish, drink, whatever. Like, not worry about can I afford it? Can I not? Like, and then all of a sudden you have a cramp and you either go to the hospital or you plop it out. So she went to the bathroom. This woman does not look. She's she, small. She looks no, like she's yeah. a normal sized. Not I shouldn't say normal, but she is typically sized person walking the earth. Okay? Right. And she. um but she did think she gained some weight during the pandemic, which right. completely makes sense. I know. I we've actually, all gained weight. Yeah. I actually kind of feel like the pan, the, this this makes more sense. I can't sense believe there's not it, more pandemic surprise babies. Yeah. Because, I mean, so it makes she's more just sense like, now. I was just thicker in the middle. And I just thought, okay, it's pandemic. And our wedding was, you know, postponed anyway. So I wasn't, like, worried about, like, I assume getting thin for the dress. Like, she was just, like, living her life. Right. And then, um, but like periods were normal, all that stuff. Did she they, say they didn't talk about the periods? Because I was just curious. But she, about I think that. she said that she was irregular her whole life or something. Okay, so, so she then she and she thought it was like oh stress pandemic. I don't know. Yeah, and then she just said she was like it really really hurt, and so she was in the bathroom. And I think at one point before it came out, she called told the husband to call the paramedics. So she thought she was passing a kidney stone, and then he came out in the toilet and the husband or the fiance took care of it. And it's just great. They're engaged. They're together. I mean, it turned out fine, obviously, Uh, which is good. Yeah. The baby's baby's healthy. But I mean, that would be, that's quite a difference between a kidney stone and then you have a full on baby in your toilet. Like that is, I would be like, why does my kidney stone have a hand? (laughs) The minute minute the head starts coming, I just can't imagine that kind of panic. Like, Yes, the upside of all the whole pregnancy, not stressing about being pregnant. And hopefully, right. Like you said, obviously she was health, like healthy enough because the baby's fine. But the other part of it is like, holy shit, there's a, a baby coming out of me and I didn't know it. Like, I can't even imagine the reaction to that. I just still think it would be such, so amazing. <laughs> I just think I'm, it would be so I hope that happens for you. Great. I mean, there's been times when I, seriously, I thought I was 
giving birth to a baby. Like I was like, holy, this is amazing. <laughs> but to then just actually see one come out and just like look down and the baby like, hello. Like and then just, you have a baby all of a sudden. Uh, I do miss that show though. I mean. It was just the reenactments were And people fun. would always be like, how do you not know? Well. They always had like a really long story. It would be like, some of them would be like, I was like, yeah. I was always irregular. I didn't gain that much weight. Like a lot of times it was like where you could kind of see how, but you would just think like nothing, like no morning sickness, the boobs, like nothing happened. But I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I guess it's like a real easy pregnancy. All right. Here's this weird, juicy thing that's happening on um, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay. So I watched it last night and... The season is just whatever. You don't have to watch it for me to tell you. But I thought this part was interesting. So this girl, Drew, she has a couple kids. And I found this part interesting because her mom is a preacher. Her mom has a church. But the mom was not going to give what they called a baby blessing for her two-year-old daughter. This guy named Prophet Jones or something was going to do it. Okay. And I was like, okay, I've heard of preachers. I've heard of bishops that, you know, aren't Catholic. Like, I've heard of other things. And then you've heard a prophet, like in Mormon. But he just called himself a prophet, I guess, because he says, I talk to Jesus. Like, he just, like, directly comes to me. Okay. Like, there's no middleman or anything. Oh. Just, I'm a prophet. So then she goes, I, um, my friend took this other girl home, um, who would name LaToya, and she revealed to my assistant that she has something going on with the prophet. And so therefore, I have to cancel my baby blessing because the prophet can't do my baby blessing if he is uh, sleeping around with this other girl. So then they confront her and she's like, I'm taking life coaching lessons from the prophet. And she's like, well, the prophet had a, a baby and, you know, and a fiance. And you've ruined everything. You've ruined my, I can't now have the prophet bless my baby. So I, my entire baby shower christening thing is canceled because of you. And she was like, but I wasn't having sex with him. And Candy's like, hey, if if Latoya wants to give him the cooch, if she wants to give the prophet the cooch, that's her business. Right. He's the one who still, shouldn't he be the hire of the spirituality? Like, And then she called her a... Um, forgot the name of it but it starts with a d but it's some it's some it's like a name of someone in the first testament that like seduces men with her body and i was like this is just so weird like all of a sudden you find out that some girl is screwing the guy that we were going to do your your christening and then you're like well thanks thanks for making him cheat now because now i don't have someone to bless my baby and i'm like meanwhile your mom is the preacher why can't she just do it. Yeah, it just seems like a weird reason to be mad at somebody in general. But also, she de she never said that she was having sex with him, right? She was like, no, he's just my life coach. She, she doesn't admit to it, but she kind of like gets annoyed and leaves. Like, I'm right. not even going to address this, which right. makes me think, yeah, probably something's going on. Right. Um, I don't know. It seems like a I lot just think it's weird to call yourself a prophet. Yeah, I mean. Prophet Heather. I mean, I predict a lot of things, but I don't think is that, that what makes prophet, me a prophet means. I feel stupid right now. I don't really I know. I feel what like it means. a prophet meant like back in the Bible is that like someone was a prophet and that they came down and they spoke like wisdom that they believe came from God. So I guess there that could happen today. They're like, well, why is it just you know two thousand years? So just ago? people like predict like they can see things that are coming. Yeah. Okay. So the prophet probably came down. Like and, you, like your Juicy Scoop prediction. Yeah. And so maybe the prophet came down and goes, I predict that I'm going to be talked about on this explosive <laughs> season of Real Housewives of Atlanta. And that's when he knew he was a prophet. And that's when he got, and he's like, I'm going to do some life coachings. I'm going to get some cooch. And cooch guess what I'm going to get out of doing your baby blessing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's probably like, oh my God, I don't have to go to that baby yeah, blessing anymore. Yeah, I didn't want to do the baby blessing and be on camera. Yeah. And has anyone seen him on camera? Do we know? No, what he looks but of like? course, okay. like if you live in Atlanta and you're in the prophet preacher world, I'm sure everybody you know totally knows who he, who is. he is. Yeah. Um, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, the trailer dropped, and it does not disappoint. No, it's everything I wanted it to be. Okay, I haven't watched it. I need to so watch it. So you know what's going on with Erica Jane? That her husband is this big attorney who stole millions from his clients that were supposed to get millions millions of dollars from their 
class action lawsuits and they did not get their money. He kept it. And the money supposedly six to 20 million or something went through her business, Erica Jane. They're now getting divorced and they address it in this, this season. Like, how much did you know? And do you think she knew? She says, um, <laughs> she said, I was shocked. If you had asked me, I would have said, I will hold that man's hand till he's into the ground. Mm. Only he knows. And they're like, and then Dorit's like, but we're talking about widows and orphans, Erica Jane. And you're telling us you had no idea, mind you. And she's like, no, I, I didn't know. Do Mr. Girardi her? knew. <laughs> no, I don't, because it, right, right last week, this thing came out, this attorney that covers the whole thing, um, that she signed these documents saying, like, I, uh, let me see what she said, tries to claim that she didn't know what was going on. But these purport, purportedly, yeah, pur signed documents would undercut that position. She was assisting in the loan in fact, gave priority to the lender over her own personal assets. You can judge for yourself. So she signed these papers, which they have. Right. Saying, like, I'm my assets will also be uh, be in charge, you know, collateral. collateral, yes. My assets will also be collateral. Oh. So she's so she screwed. To, right. She's screwed. She's, like, going to walk she away was, with nothing. Okay, because either she knew it was going on or Basically, she was just walk blindly trusting and going like, sure, yeah, my, yes. you can use my money to his collateral, no big deal. Yes. And um, thinking that he would never do something like yeah. that. Yeah, but then there's this one scene where she's just screaming at the new girl Sutton. I mean, I'm pretty excited. Where she's like, she goes, you, I got screaming at this one girl. And, the, and then Sutton goes, what? What's going to happen to me, Erica Jane? What are you going to do to me? And she's just like viciously screaming. And so. Oh, it's going to be it. I'm so excited. It's going to be the most dramatic season ever. Oh, and they do address that Scott Disick is dating um, Lisa Rinna's husband. Uh, not husband, oh. sorry. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Lisa Rinna's 19 year old daughter, um, Amelia Gray, is dating Scott Disick. Oh, she is? Yeah. And, mm. uh, and Lisa Rinna's like, well, you know, she's dating Scott. And Kyle's like, he's really old, Lisa. He's 39 with three kids or something. And she's like, well, what do you want me to do? But you know what someone reminded me of? Harry fucking Hamlin, he dated a much older woman when he was like 20 and she was like 40. And he has a child. Who's oh, like, really? He has like a 50-year-old child. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, a lot of people don't. Well, that's why they listen, tune into this podcast. I guess so. To get educated. Jen Shaw, she's from Real Houses of mm -hmm. Salt Lake City. She has been arrested. She has to come up with $250,000 in less than a week, and she's selling all her handbags. Oh, and she's just doing it on those sites. <laughs> like, oh, she can, uh, there's a there's a, um, a website called The Real Real, I think, where you can yeah. sell luxury consignment. Maybe she should try that. So she has, this is how she's coming up with her money for. Yeah, and, it's, and someone sent it to me, and I go, I actually have more respect for her that she's, like, going in her closet and selling her shit versus trying to go to someone and be like, oh, can you sign for 250 And then I'm going to take off to the, you know, at least, like, she's actually getting the money that. What is it she's in trouble for? I, I don't know. Oh, that she story did, was I was she, confused by. I'm it's, easily it's confused, very confusing. everybody. It's very confusing. Basically, she had a company where they would go and kind of prey on elderly people that didn't have oh, computers. Oh, that's right. Because it was similar to like, um, it reminded me of that Netflix show I, that I care a lot. Yes. That movie, like something super So then they would say, shady. don't you want to have like your own business? We'll help you create your own business um, on a website and this and that. And you take this little course and it's $4,000. And then it would never get up and going. And mm. then the people would be finally really frustrated. And then she'd come around, her company would come around again as another company and be like, do you find you're in credit card debt? Could We can now help you out. And then they'd like re-victimize them. Oh and then God. they'd also sell those lists to other scammers and then get a portion of those scams. So she's, I mean, she's going to go to jail forever. I hope so. I mean, that's what she's being acute. But 
I mean, I actually, like I said, I think it's good that she's like selling her bags and stuff. Trying to get her own, yeah. Yeah, then having figure. like Andy Cohen co-sign for her. Right. No, I, that's what I would have done. I would have been like, you want me to stay on the show? You guys co-sign. You give me the 250. I'm not selling these bags. Yeah, but that's not going to, it's not going to, The that money is only going to keep her, what's just like bail or something, right? I mean, she's going to This is have the to... 250 and then she needs someone to sign for the $1 million, So I don't know who signed for that, but this is the 250 to keep her out of jail. Oh, okay. So I think she has like till the end of this week to come up with that 250. So, you know, but like also like who wants the bag that was like, you know, walking around this earth on the backs of old people that didn't know how to exactly. use a URL. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'd, honestly, she should be probably donating all those and taking them, getting the money and then donating it to something to try to uh, redeem she's herself. She's never going to right. donate. Yeah, no, she doesn't seem like. The, yeah, if you if you prayed on the yeah. elderly, you're not going to turn around and be like a person who she donates just was your money. She screams all the time, and oh, anyway. So let's talk about 90 Day Fiance because okay. a lot of people are like, you know, I didn't really watch this season. I'll be honest because it got away from me, and then it's like 18,000 hours of TV a week. It's a lot of TV a week, and but I, I have been invested in all of it. I do, but watch I it. am intrigued by this 52 year old Stephanie. So can you just tell me a little bit about her? Because she's got lots of uh, drama going on. She's very dramatic. She is like, um, she, you, I wish you watched it because you would do have a fun impression of okay. her, the way she talks. She's just Well, I did like, I watch this little Instagram She's post. like, I love Harris. And then Harris, like, I don't know. She has this, like, kind of a fun. Yeah, but she's like, she, oh, I'm so successful. But I was bitten by over a thousand bugs. Which, she's very into talking about how she was bitten by so many bugs. She doesn't. So the confusing thing about her is, well, I keep mix, I keep thinking she's on Marrying Millions because I, yeah. I keep going like, no, she's on Marrying Millions. And John's like, no, she's on 90 Day Fiance. So she's, because we, we watch it, but I met, and then we watch them back to back. So yeah. um, she, she was dating this guy, Harris. And then she, while she was dating him, she slept with his cousin. Okay. And then when she- All in America or in the foreign in, countries? In the, in she, they're in like, I don't know where they are right now, Belize. Okay. I, so she, cause she went to visit him. Uh, yeah, in another country. Yeah. And she went, so she was trying to bring him over. Okay. And she, and then she and Harris breaks up and the cousin comes around to comfort her. And now she's just dating him and saying she's going to bring him to America. And he's like, I love her very much, which I mean, I don't think that he does. He just okay. doesn't even know her. Um, And so he, he's, you know, she's very rich from what I can tell, very wealthy. She has a big, I believe, skincare company or something in her uh, state maybe Michigan okay and um so she, you know it was already a little nuts that she's like well I just I was in love with Harris and then the next day she's like I'm in love with his cousin okay and, I'm, and I wish I never dated Harris and then now she wants to bring this guy back to the United States with her okay so the story that she's telling now is that she was broken up with this guy before she ever went back and filmed with him okay and the TLC people said, no, you got to go. You got to. It's like, I don't want to continue because we're broken up. No, you got to go and visit him once more. And um, you'll get so much out of this platform. You'll be able to make so much money on Cameo. It's exactly what they said in the article. Um, because she said they only get like $1,000 to do this whole thing. Well, I always wonder when someone, because she does, I mean, I could be wrong, but from what yeah. I've read, she's she's pretty wealthy in her, in her own right. So just see, I'm like, why is she doing this then? If she doesn't need the money, why is she exposing herself to the, And she doesn't I mean, seem I think to just have... like people, she probably wanted to be famous and she loved the. Right. She just said, well, this is, you know, she started this uh, Instagram last night. I watched it and she goes, welcome to an episode uh, on the sofa with Stephanie. So it's like, just like everybody else, she okay. dreamed like she'd have a talk show one day and this okay. is going to be her talk show. Okay. And, um, so she's there with her personal trainer, and she talks about how she got bitten by 100 bugs uh, when she was on the traveling. Okay. And that the guy had sex with her without a condom. And therefore, she said, I was sexually assaulted, oh. and I'm suing TLC for allowing this to happen, and then for all the ailments of the bugs, is the way I understand it. Wait, so he, <laughs> she's saying assaulted like someone... Like he forced himself on her. She, or she felt that because he like lied and didn't use a condom while they were having sex, oh, okay. that that is, in her opinion, sexual assault. Well, if he lied and said he was using one and he wasn't, then that's absolutely wrong. But um, I don't really know. Yeah. So she's yeah. trying to sue TLC. Got it. So she was not at the reunion, and um, 
Right, I read that she wasn't going to go to the reunion. And she's like suing them and she's saying it was fake. I told them we were broken up before. But then if she went there and still had sex with them, then they weren't really broken up. And people break up all the time. I can see why the producers were like, are you sure? And then the other thing she's suing for is saying that her, um, that she wants the money back for all that she's, all the money she spent to go there. Like her travel ticket stuff. How did they not pay for that? How you know TLC what? I not- think in the past when I've asked people, it isn't all covered. It I, isn't. I just would assume that it would be. I would assume that they would pay. Like this is, you know, they're not giving them much money. How are they expect people? I don't, some of these people, especially, you know, they don't seem to have much money. The ones that don't have any money on their own and then are are, are going there. And- I mean, I think you've got it. The one guy, Tarek, he's already declared bankruptcy and he's like $500,000 in debt. No, the way I understand it is, no, they, I don't think they cover that much. Come on, much. TLC, cover a little travel. Come on. You can do it. They I know. can do it. These shows are crazy popular. And you're like, you said they're Well, up. I think they're going to have to start to, or at least now new people will know to to insist. Right. Like, no, you're paying for every single travel expense plus what I make on top of that. Well, so is she suing the guy, though, for assault? Because that's No, who she's he- suing just TLC in general for not protecting her, I guess. Well, just so, I mean, I do feel like sometimes when I watch these shows that they should be, there should be some stepping in. Um, I will agree. <laughs> and there are times where I'm like, yeah. someone needs to step in here. Because she also does seem um, uh, very vulnerable in some ways. Like there's, she's a little, I don't want to use the word. I don't know if she takes something or she just always seems a little, um, she, like she'll have a glass of wine and it'll turn quickly. Sometimes, so okay. I don't know if she's taking something or if she's on a medication well, for something. Well, according to her... her personal trainer, who's been her personal trainer for 13 years, right? there is no way, so it's good that I'm stopping you before you say this because this is really what irritates her. There's no way that she could be on drugs or drinking and be this successful as a woman and been able to live through those bug bites. No, well, bug bites are- He said the bug, bug bites, bites were, suck. she was- so no, I don't, she does drink on the show and she's always like she loves she loves that she she's like you she walks around with a bar, buttery chardonnay in her hand having the best living her, and it looks fun and believe me if i was in belize i would be too I'd okay be like, but um i there just sometimes i there's been speculation that not that she's maybe i don't think she's on drugs that maybe she has to take something for her. maybe she's on like she has a medication that doesn't mix well with Wine has been the speculation, and believe me, right. I'm just complete. I have no well, fucking idea. Well, I just think idea. TLC is probably so bummed that they ever found her in the first place. Oh, um, she's she's. Uh, we'll it, see what she, happens. I mean, there was just the best at the beginning before it, it started to get like this or got yeah. a little sad. It was, you know, that's how it always starts out, kind of fun. Right. And she's like, I gotta tell Harris that I banged his cousin, and and you're just like, oh. But then like, did she still gonna... stay with Harris, or she ended up with a cousin? She ended up with a cousin. So then it must be the cousin then that then had sex without a condom with her. I guess because she she broke Maybe up with Harris. Maybe she wants Harris to go back to the original the, condom wearing cousin. Then I listen. There was I don't know how she, I didn't know that she I, she just broke up with him and then the next day the cousin was there and they were together. It was have very you confusing. ever banged cousins or brothers or anything like that? No. Friend, one time I dated a friend of a of a, an ex boyfriend like late after we broke up. You know, a few months later, but yeah. it was like we hadn't really. It wasn't a big deal. Doesn't really count. No, but no. I always think that's so weird. It would be very like, weird. Like, I even think it's weird when it comes down to, like, Marilyn Monroe. I always thought that was the weirdest story about the Kennedys and Marilyn Monroe, is that she first boned John F. Kennedy, and then she was supposedly bo- boning Bobby. Yeah, just, it would, I feel like, like the pass around is, is so gross. Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't want, and then that just makes, like, family gatherings awkward. Right. Yeah. Like, you just have to be like, oh, I'm. Hey, remember when I had sex with you and yeah. you? Yeah, I don't. Like My it. other favorite show, <gasps> Seeking Sister Wife. Heather, you, let's talk. You made me watch this. Yes, and I did. I, I, that guy. This is Garrick he, right here. He makes me so angry. He because they're not. This isn't. They've never been. This isn't. They've never lived this way. This isn't no, their they, religion. He's like. He's like. I just God told me I needed yeah. another wife out of nowhere. They is never he a prophet. Yeah, I mean, like they were never going to do this. This wasn't right. their lifestyle. Like the other they couple have two on the show that been together forever. That yeah. um, that co- yeah, they were like, and they've been searching for someone for ten years and stuff. Like, yeah, at least I'm like, okay, this is what they actually believe, and this is right. what they want to do. This guy, in my opinion, just wants to bang someone else, and he got all excited about Roberta Bert, as they call her, <sighs> and the, I mean he. They had to get a divorce 
so that he could bring Roberta in. Right. This is like <laughs> Seeking Sister Wives is like 90 day fiance edition because yeah. we have this element of that's the only way you can bring her over is if they get married. But also now you've basically committed perjury on camera. I know. Cause because the, you went to the court and he yeah. goes, so, so the judge goes, so there's no way this marriage can be res- redeemed. And they're like, no. Both yeah. of them will go, no. And then she's like, but I'm so excited. The other thing about this also, show, because like, I've watched it for three seasons, is there's something really sad about the wife that agrees to do this because it's like she honestly doesn't have any friends. I, I, I she just wants a girlfriend. Yeah, because if I was a friend, if she had a, f- a good friend to say, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. He's divorcing you to bring over this girl that you guys just met. And then... They went to they go to Cabo and they he, go to Cabo to meet her. He gets a room with her he for the a, whole time. And he goes, "Oh, I can't wait to hug her and smell, smell her. her hair." Oh. And he goes, "Um, oh. she's she's much different than my wife. When um I hug her, she her head can lean on my chest cuz she's tiny, so we call her tiny wife and we call the other woman large wife." Yeah. Mhm. Large wife. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he calls it. I mean, this woman is taking a beating, and I don't understand. I can't. And then she has two boys, it feels and they're like, she's like brainwashed or bye, something. bye, bye. So when we come home, we're going to bring home Mama Bert. They're like, great. Because I don't think they really get it. They're just like, just like you would anyone else, like a nanny or somebody no. like that you like. And the creepiest part, when he, oh. told, when he told his ex-wife, no, his ex-wife, yeah. that... Um, or he's telling Roberta that he's going to stay with her for eight days. He goes, so sister, he calls her sister now. Yeah. He goes, so sister says I get you all to myself for eight days and we're going to yeah. stare, share in a room. And then oh, she's also like, because, ah, I didn't say that. Also because <laughs> Bert from Brazil, the woman, she doesn't speak any English. So it all has to be translated on the phone. Mm-hmm. So then he'll go, so um, maybe we put sister to bed now so that you and I can be alone. <gasps> and then it like, and so then the girl sees it, you know, and then she goes, oh, OK. Yeah. You go to bed, you know, and she's like, yeah, I go. And then she's like, so uh, don't don't become lovesick or something. something. And then they so they're sitting on the bed together. All three of them are in the room. But that's the wife's number one's room. And then they go. All right. So I think um, I think we're going to go off by ourselves now. And she's like, OK, OK. And then. And then, of course, now this is where I'm like, the producers must have got involved. The rooms are right next to each other. Yeah. So hopefully, well, hopefully they. I mean, I hope she brought but, some yeah. earplugs. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, so <laughs> the, she's going to hear them bone for eight days so that they can bond. And the girl said, I feel bad. You know, the girl was like, I feel bad that she's going to be, you know, have to hear us, but oh well. It, it's the most. It's just this one makes me so angry. I was like almost mad at you for making me watch the show because this guy, but now I can't stop watching it. But like he, they just, he makes me angry because he's just, he's full of shit. Like he's so full of shit. And then he's like, I forget what he said, something else. Um, and then he's like, well, this is God's path. So we're going to watch the path. I'm like, really? Because God actually had 11, uh, 12 disciples. He didn't have 10 women. I don't know where this came from no. because it did not come from Jesus. Well, and also, did you like if anything? Jesus was like, everyone leaves your wife and come follow me and hang out. And you and just li- and you lied and said that you were, your marriage was irredeemable so that you could go bang someone else. So, oh. like, that's that's not, you know, that you're not supposed to lie, are you? It's just horrible. And then this is another horrible couple. This guy, he owns a chicken farm. He always looks like he's about to fall asleep on a chef. He's always like, I don't know. I'm so he tired on my wife. One daughter with his first wife, another daughter or another baby on the way with the second. And um he has a voice like this. He was on last season too. It's like very Kermit the Frogish. And he's like, um, so we are excited. We are courting another female to be part of our family possibly and right now we're going to FaceTime her. So they FaceTime her and it is the most boring conversation I have ever seen in my life. The girl's in her car. I don't know if she's living out of it or what. There's like crap everywhere and she's like hi. You're like hi. Um." And his face is so red because he's so nervous. So we wanted to know would you like to come out and court us in person? Um, yeah, okay, that that'd be fine. So we just got word on the FaceTime that um she is going to come out 
so that we could really get to know each other if we're going to take this to the next level. Yeah, there's no spice in this household. There's no fun. Oh, my God. It, it is it a was... bore. Even when they're painting, they're like, so what are we thinking about dinner? <laughs> um, I was talking to Sister Wife, and we were thinking about Cajun chicken. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you know I like the spiciness on the chicken. <laughs> I mean, it's literally, I'm like, I know these people don't drink. This is the boringest life. I, she, I know this girl that they called, she seemed, uh, she even kind of seemed like, oh, I wish I would have stuck to text. Like, I wish I never would have FaceTimed with you guys because I'm so bored right now. Like, she uh, even kind of seemed like, she was like, okay, sure, I guess I'll come out. And then the Snowdens, this is the couple that's they been on real. Yeah. For, for three seasons now, and they're courting two women. Yes. And um, one girl is from South Africa and has two little daughters, and the other one has no kids. And my prediction is it's all bullshit. They just want to be on TV. They're going to end up with nobody. She acts like she's like Miss Hippy Dippy. I'm open to other women coming and fucking my husband. She's not. Oh, really? I, I don't, don't watch, think this she is, is my at first all. interaction of them. Because she's so like, I... oh. So, like, they come home from like a dance lesson, and she's like, so. Did you guys have how, fun? Yeah. <laughs> how was your. Dance. There, you be the girl that just had a date yeah. with him. So, how was your date? Oh, it was so fun. So, like, we danced and tangoed, Ooh. and he dipped me. Ooh, dip. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys didn't get too close, did you? Well, there was a little kiss. There was a little kiss when he dipped me, right? So, that's. Oh. No, that's. Yeah. I mean, that's what. That's great. That's yeah. what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. We're bonding. When you're getting to know each other. Um, yeah. No, we, we had pretty. a conversation oh. about no physical contact. Oh. So when you were dancing, I didn't understand. I didn't realize you were going to actually be touching each other. And I just want to keep it really spiritual. Well, we weren't line dancing. Like, how were we going to dance and not touch each other? Just... Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to let you guys. <laughs> work it out okay. and I'm going to take care of these babies who I thought you'd be more helpful with but not well, really because I mean, you went out and danced right oh no. and you left me with the three babies right so I I mean we were just what trying to bond because I thought that's, that's what you what want I, right? I, that's what I want I want a lot of females oh. around okay yeah. I want to open my heart I'm not <laughs> I mean <laughs> I'm the least jealous person that there is Go, I am yeah. not jealous at all right. I am just about uh, embracing femininity and mm -hmm. sharing a household with another female. Yeah, no, that's you seem very uh, open to it, so I'm glad. Whoa, that you're... let's watch those hands. <laughs> like it is seriously like she, yeah. she's so the person that you know that she's just a nightmare. Like she just you know I, think, I see I because I interviewed the them before. and I could tell like she tries to act like she's open to it. I don't think she is. Oh, well, that's I sucks. think she wants to believe that she is. But then they don't end up. Well, they were married to someone. They're married to someone yeah. else, and then I. It, she took off. We she took off, and we don't really know what happened. Um, but I think, I think it was exactly that. I don't think it was presented. It was in like a way this of, isn't working. For I don't me. think it was this non jealous situation. I think that there was, and it was just no way that you could do anything with it. Joe Jonas's wife, um, Sophie. She posted about her thoughts about... So Taylor Swift, I guess, has a new song where she's roasting Joe Jonas. Yeah, I think it was like from the vault or something. I think it was like a song that she hadn't... Oh, so she wrote it a long time ago. I think so, yeah. Because it was like when she was like 18. Yeah, from what I... It, I, I got confused about it, but... um, and in mo It's either because she's... Re, you know, she's re-recording things. Oh. So she either re-recorded it or it was like never released before, but it, it was one or the other. It wasn't like a new song. Um, oh, that God. she just wrote about Joe Jonas. I think all the Swifties are going to school I mean, me on this. I mean, you know, I guess you just run out of material after a certain point. Yeah, but I, mean, I, th I think written about every written guy. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was written before because I remember them saying like she had like been interviewed on Ellen about it or something. So I think it was like an older song that either she redid or just released. I don't know, but. I do enjoy like Taylor Swift song. I'm not gonna. I mean, she doesn't like Taylor Swift, but okay. she liked it. The wife liked it. She said it's a bop. His wife. I thought that that term was weird too. Like it's not a bop, bop or something. It's not not a bop. I didn't get it. It's not. All these you don't speak things, the kids. You don't speak right. like the kids, Heather. Speaking I do. of kids, I don't. This article in People. So Rachel Kirk Connell, who was the pick for Matt the Bachelor. We saw them break up with her. He said, you've just got to go work on yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any hope for us. Right. Then he said, well, ev 
nobody's not irredeemable or something. I don't know what that meant. And then, um, but the scoop is they've been talking and he sent her out to New, New York. York and then he sort of dumped her again or he, the girl that he was talking to two days before said, I was just talking to him two days before. And then he, he was like, no, Rachel and I are just friends. But then Rachel went over thinking like he's been FaceTiming me and he's into me again. Yeah, it was kind of confusing. Like, he flew her out to New York. I mean, if you're going to fly her there, it's obviously, like... It would, he's just fucking you, with her. Like, think, that's it. He's like every other guy, TV show or not. He's just fucking with her. Either he's fucking with her or he... I mean, what it, which is, in the end, still fucking with her. But I wonder if it's like he actually does still want to work it out with her. But then when it gets public that he might be, he feels like he gets backlash or something. And then he just Like, I feel and like she has the plague. Or Corona. Just kidding. <laughs> I do. I feel like she has the plague and he doesn't he, exactly that. He's like, I love you, but I can't be with well, you. So he should just not then he should just not try to fly her places and stuff and just like leave it then. But I, instead of because then the other girl came out and said that he had was dating her um, and he asked her to come to Miami. And then that um, that also they had been dating before The Bachelor and he tried to get her to come on The Bachelor. Right. Yeah. So that was also I think confusing. he is awful and i i do not think anyone should be dating him no i don't think he needs don't to be dating date, anyone right now he seems confused. do not date do not go on a date with matt juicy scoopers until <laughs> 2000 or 20, please do 2024 yeah he's not ready he he's needs too confused. several years to just figure out who the hell he is yeah get used to this fame decompress from the show D- yes yeah he's figure confused. out like he is just an and this girl just this is just setting her back further, being screwed around. And, and you know, um, I I heard rumors, too, that he was um, – I didn't hear rumors. I heard it from a good source. But that he was calling her after, calling her right up until the Rose thing, that they were together up until the Rose, after the Rose. Right. And then, like, after a week, he was back, like, calling her again. So, yeah, that's what so I was – So, for it, the TV, he acted like it was dead, dead, dead. Right. And it wasn't. And that's fine. I mean, he chose her. He probably does still really like her. So then that in that case, he has to go, I want to work on this with you then. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's one or the other because I feel like now it's now it's just starting to make him look um, not well, very Well, I'm nice. glad this story came out because I, I don't like him anymore. Hmm. Him. Oh, and I also um, researched what was the deal with his clothing being that he wore such small, skinny things. His little, t- his little tight pants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I said, oh, was, you know, I'm thinking, was he just going along with a look? With whatever producers or the wardrobe people getting them. No, he, that's his look. He loves it. He likes crop jackets. He likes Lululemon skinny pants. <laughs> that's just what he likes. I don't like it. I don't think no. it works on his body type. I no. think that's like for a more petite man. No, it's not for me. I, 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 some people love that look good. Go out with Matt. But like you said, not for a couple more years because he needs to do some. No, he needs nobody to do some... can date. No Juicy Scooper is allowed to date Matt until 2024. He, he is toxic. He's gonna. <laughs> he's too insane. He has Wait no until, idea what's going on. Not in until he starts wearing pants that cover his ankles. Yes. Yes. Then you can date him. Yes. That's when you know. I'm going to end on this last story, which I thought was so weird. So somebody brought this up that Brad Pitt. Now, this is old. They're no longer together. They were dating like this past fall. Okay. He's dating this woman. Okay. This is insane. She's really pretty. I don't, I mean, well, they I don't sort know of look story. alike, first of all. Oh, they. Oh, yeah. Similar features. Oh my features. God, she looks like she could be like Shiloh's sister. She looks like she, she could be related like if, to him. She yeah. looks like if he and <laughs> just two hot people. <laughs> yeah. So he's 56. She's 27. Her husband is 68. Wait, so they she... had an open marriage while she was dating Brad Pitt. And they have a seven year old son. So when she was 20, she married and had a child with this guy named Roland Mary who's 68, who's a restaurant guy in Germany. She's his fourth wife. Now that she's 27, has a seven-year-old son, she's da- she was dating Brad Pitt for a few months. Okay, hold on. Yes. Now, if you agree to an open marriage. Yes. Or you, all of a sudden you're like, oh, so I'm dating Brad Pitt. You're like, no, 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 that's not what we agreed to. Like, you're supposed to date. You, you could be in an open marriage, but it can't be fucking Brad Pitt. Like, that... How am I supposed to compete with that? Like that's a, that's not fun for anybody. 
Could you imagine? I mean, I guess at 68, he feels like anybody that she dates is going to be younger than him. But he's like, yeah. Oh, what are you going to do? Go out and date Brad Pitt? Sure, go ahead. And she's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then she does. Like, But wow. how weird for him to date her. Like, do you imagine you're dating a girl? And, you're, and she's like, well, I'm in an open marriage. With whom? A 68-year-old man. Yeah. I'm his fourth wife with a seven-year-old that I had at 20. I mean... I just thought that was the weirdest fucking story. It is very strange, but Brad Pitt's yeah. own personal. And just the way it's written, it's just like, oh. Model girlfriend. I mean, she's yeah, there. Yeah. Well. Just very, very weird. Good for her, I guess. And them. All right. Well, I had a great time talking to you, Sarah. Thank you for joining us today at Juicy Scoop. At Juicy Do Scoop you, headquarters. You, I know you have a podcast, a very funny podcast. Tell everybody. Yes, please listen. It's called um, Are You My Podcast? And we do Married at First Sight. Because I'm obsessed. We do. We talk about Lifetime movies, but we just basically, we watch them so you don't have to. So we just have a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. My co-host is Mary Redzinski, and it's super fun. It's not stuff that you have to watch to, like, follow along. Um, and then I want to tell the Juicy Scoopers, as always, 20% off of my Clutch Women line. Oh, yes. With the code Juicy Scoop, because uh, it's clutchwomen.com. And right now, baseball stadiums, a lot of baseball stadiums are using the size that I make my bags in. Which because is why of, you made them. Yes, and they're doing that now because of COVID regulation, so it's easier, you know, no And you contact. know what fits inside of it perfectly? A mask. That's right. You can put your <laughs> phone and your mask in there. So just a thing for if you're going to baseball stadiums this yes. season, I got your back. And uh, do you have any stand-up dates? Not right now. I okay. don't. <laughs> okay. I really don't. It's very strange. But yeah, tune into the podcast, please, yes. and enjoy it. And um, um. I don't have any stand-up. Do you have any stand-up dates? I do. Up? I'm going to be in Miami next. Well, I have a Casper, Wyoming on April 23rd, and then Miami. Uh, at the Miami Improv, I think I'm there like 17, 18, 19, something, whatever that's that weekend is. Yeah. But I'm, yeah. I and know. And I have I'm a bunch for the fall that I haven't announced yet, but I want to like announce them at one time, like a real tour like people do. Yeah. And oh, hopefully girl. They could sell out, it could sell out really quick, and then I just could like – just re- not have to worry about um, mentioning it every fucking time I, know. I do a show. Yeah, so I'm, that's what I'm hoping. That's but, a good idea. Yeah, yeah, I'm starting to add some. I just don't have any to announce yet either. Maybe I'll try to do it like you. Maybe the day that you release yours, yeah. I'll release mine. Yeah. And it'll be all in the same places. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, girl. <laughs>